welcome to this Premiere Pro tutorial on color correction. I got asked recently if there are any other techniques for color correction in Premiere Pro and I'm sure you'll realize that there are lots and lots of techniques, many of which I don't know, as like the rest of you I'm only learning myself. But there is one technique you can use which is an alternative to the fast color corrector or the three-way color corrector for bits and pieces. It doesn't necessarily replace the color corrector or the three-way color corrector but it can make a huge difference to your shot and it's very easy to see and one of the big advantages certainly for some of the workflows is that it avoids having to nest things and as you know if you nest this sequence I have here in another sequence all you see is one piece of footage but you lose this visual feedback that tells you where all the edit points are and all the bits and pieces because you have a single piece of footage it's great for color correction but sometimes it's nice just to have a different tool in your toolbox that you can apply that might suit the situation slightly better. Now I'm not saying that this is something you should use every time but I certainly want to introduce you to blend modes and how blend modes can be used to correct, tint, um, just change your footage subtly but quite effectively while you can still see everything inside the sequence. Now before we start the first thing I want to have is my reference monitor open so I go to Windows, Reference Monitor and I have actually docked mine down here in my user interface so you can actually see what's going on and I'll try and stick as much as possible to about this size so you can see as much as we can show. So this reference monitor here is looking at this piece of footage here. This is the YC waveform so you've got darks at the bottom, lights at the top and a, a little note that was pointed out to me the other day, quite an interesting one. My footage is PAL so that's phase alternating line and PAL doesn't have IRE values at the side PAL has millivolts or is supposed to have millivolts references at the side. However, I think this is a bug with Premiere Pro because Premiere Pro have got volts. Of, can you see V at the top here? And it's showing a volt range of 0.1 up to 1.2. And how do you know what the range is? Well, actually, 1.2 is 1,200 millivolts. The correct reference range for a waveform monitor should actually be 714 down to zero. That should be black is zero, white is 714. However, for some reason, um, Premiere Pro seem to actually be working in percentage. So we can say at point 0.1 is as low as you should go and 1 is as high as you should go. So think of these more as percentage ranges as opposed to the actual millivolt ranges that it should be. Anyway, that's a side note for anybody who's working in PAL. Go between point 0.1 and 1. And if you want to prove that, just create some PAL bars, bars and tones, and you'll actually see that. Okay, so blend modes. What am I talking about? Let me create a layer to go above my footage and I'm going to go to my new items icon and I'm going to create some black video and I want it the same size as this footage, yes. Click and drag and drop it on my timeline and then just trim it out so it's the full length of my clip. You think what on earth is the point of that? All you're going to see is nothing. There you go, you've got a line at, it says here, 0.3. Okay, so what use is that? Well, now that you have that footage, select it and go up to your effects controls and I want you to open up opacity. And when you have opacity here, actually for what we're doing here, turn off the stopwatch because we're not going to animate it, although you can, but for this particular illustration we're not going to. Turn off opacity and then look at this here, it says blend mode. I want you to drop down blend mode and then when you open up blend modes there are different types of blend modes. These are about darkening, these are about lightening, these are overlaying and then there's some specialist ones at the bottom. What do I mean? It's how one layer blends with the layer below it. So this black layer at the top, what's it going to do or how's it going to blend with the layer below? Are we going to multiply the pixels together to get a really dark response? Or are we maybe going to lighten them? Or are we going to overlay the pixels? And if you want to know more about your blend modes, you go to Help, Adobe Premiere Pro Help. I've got mine opening up in a browser, but you can do however you want and just choose Blend Modes. and then you've got Premiere Pro blending modes and it explains all the different types of categories that there are and how they work with each other. Okay, I'm not going to go over all of these. You soon get to know the ones that you like and which ones you're going to use. You'll see that there's a few that I quite like, but this explains all the different blend modes, how they work with each other and what's the end result. So do look that up in the help. It's very useful information. Right. Going back to my clip, I have these blend modes and now I want to blend the pixels of my black layer into the pixels of the layer below. And to do that, I'm going to choose either overlay or soft light. I often find soft light is one of my favorites for darkening stuff up. So I'm going to choose soft light and look at this result. 
I've got this much darker look. Unfortunately, the sea looks almost muddy. It's that dark. It hasn't really done what you think you want it to do. But this is where you then need to go to this magic hot text for opacity. And then you start to pull down the opacity of the black layer. And then you're having an effect, as you can see from the YC waveform, of how the actual shot looks. So that's how the shot was originally, without any effect. And now we're just beginning to darken it up to make it a little bit more moody, a little bit more effective. You can see the difference taking place both on the screen and in the reference monitor. So that's at 33%. Now let's just go through other parts of my shots. Might feel that that's a bit dark for that particular sequence, might be a bit dark for that one. Okay, so maybe 33 is a little bit too much. Take it down to say, let's try 20. It's usually a good figure. Now I've just got enough lightness in there to be quite interesting. Of course, I can see where all my bits and pieces are. We're actually going to pull these highlights out. So that's a dip to black there. We're actually going to pull some of these highlights out a bit later on with another blend mode. So what we've done is we've created something that's just that little bit more moody, almost like moving the gamma slider in the fast color corrector when we're using levels there. Okay, so we're beginning to affect the shot in an interesting way. We can still see everything. And the beauty of this is, if we only want to affect a small area, we can pull it in. But also, I haven't had to go into individual clips to change each one of them. I've just laid something over the top. Now, this isn't very blue, and say I wanted the image to look a lot bluer. I can actually go to New Item, Color Matte, and create the color matte as the same size as my sequence, OK. And then I can actually choose colors, and I can choose a deep, dark blue if I want something that might just might make a big difference to the way the sky looks. Let's choose something like that. See how that looks. Click OK. Call this blue matte. Click OK. And then I'm going to take the blue matte, drop it on top of the black layer, and pull it out all the way across. And you know what I'm going to do now. I'm going to select the layer. I'm going to go to Opacity. Turn off the stopwatch because I want it the same all the way through for this particular example. But of course, you do have the option to keyframe it all the way through. And then go down, I'm going to try soft light again. That's really made the shot look completely blue. But if I start to pull it down, say, so let's go to 20 again, just for example. 20, 21. Okay, let's just turn it on and off. So that's before, after. Before, after. And again, if we turn off the black layer, that's before, with just the blue, and that's without the blue. So you can suddenly see the original shot looked quite flat. But we've brought in a blue that's applied and made the whole thing look a lot more rich. And we've actually darkened the shot up and actually given depth to the shot by adding this black layer over the top. So that's how we've changed it. And you can see the changes if I just turn them both off. So black off, you can see that this has brought up the bottom, the blacks of our YC waveform. And turn off the blue, you can see that it had biased it. And so we've added bits and pieces in and made quite a difference. OK, I'm just going to collapse these layers because I want to bring in one more layer and I'm going to open up the new items icon and I'm going to go to color matte same size again and this time I'm going to choose a white layer click OK I'm going to call this white matte click OK and then pull the white matte on top now if you drop it into the grey area as you know it creates a new channel for you and pull the white matte all the way through and again I'm going to select the white matte I'm going to go up to my opacity I turn off the stopwatch because I'm not going to animate it, although you can of course, and I'm going to choose soft light again. Now you can choose other blend modes, you don't have to use soft light all the way through, there are plenty of other blend modes you could choose if you want, but soft light again will do what I want it to do, and then I start dialing down the opacity until I start to get an interesting look. So again, at about 20, 13, say 15. So if I turn that off and on, look at the YFC waveform as well, turn it off, on, off, on. It's just bringing the whole image up that little bit. Maybe you want to take it down even more. I think I probably would in this particular instance, just to bring that little bit of interest in. Just to lighten the shot a tad. If I turn those all off, that's the original shot. Turn the whites back on. Just lightened it a little bit, made it a little bit more glowy even in these white highlights. Black in is making it richer. Blues making it a richer colour, a deeper colour. And it's all done and I can still see everything. And if I want to, I can just play around with these however I like. I can actually trim them so they're only affecting certain parts of my project. I can have a look through and see how it looks for all the other bits and pieces. So there's a beach with a castle in the background. Let's just start to turn these off and see what it looks like. 
So that's the original image. We add our highlights in, just boosting it that little bit. Now we can add the richness of the blacks back in, giving us the contrast, and the blues is giving us a nice blue sky. Now, you might not find that this works for you, but it's an option. You can actually use black video and you can use colour mats and you can blend them with all kinds of different blend modes. Do play around with the blend modes. You might find a different blend mode that has a completely different effect and might look that little bit better for what you're trying to do. So these are the options you have for blend modes. But there is one other thing that I want to show you, which is called the filmic blend technique. And I'll show you that in the next tutorial. Well, I hope you found this first tutorial useful, that you'll be able to apply these techniques and muck around with them. As I say, this is just an alternative. You might think that the other approaches are far better. The point is, you have a choice. My name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.